moving my body and releasing some toxins and doing a nice, beautiful workout for you. So I have with me some tools of divination. I have with me an inner hiking tool, which will help you to release um, tension. So what this is, and you can um, find out more about the uh, tennis ball concept that I have here, which is a, a tension reliever. So what you do is you take two tennis balls and you put them in a sock. And then you use that sock and then you can adjust the balls to where it works for you on your back. So then you can set it where you need it on your back and then lay down stand up against a wall, but it really helps you be able to sit up straight when you can move those balls into it. I highly recommend it. Not a lot of people are driving right now, but some people are. So if you're driving, this is a great tool. And then if you just need it to be able to use it for opening up oh, your chest, you can do that too. I mean, there's a lot of uses for it. So if you want to learn more about it, I mean, I didn't go into great detail, it's pretty basic, but you can find out more on um, Inner Hiking, uh, my YouTube channel. I talk about it. It's one of the yoga bites. All right, thanks for joining me for Inner Hiking. I kind of didn't want to have much music because um, it's so pretty outside right now. And I'm going to open the door so we can hear some of the um, birds. And I can breathe a little bit. I've got it a little warm here in the nest. The hot salon. <clears throat> Alright, that feels much better. I'm going to give us a little light. Alright, thanks for joining me. Hi, morning. Great. What do you think of uh, the beautiful painting? Hmm? I like using the hop salon for the um, the cast. It just feels <clears throat> it feels more open. So thank you for joining me. Let's. Um, it looks like we've got a couple people on Facebook. So we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, start with some divination because this is what we got last time and I got some really good news actually super good news it's hot in here so I'm going to take my uh, cake shirt off which I saw cake live <clears throat> on Halloween and one of the gals who was doing the cocktails she was so cute she had all this like gauze wrapped around her with these little tea lights that were um you know battery operated tea lights and it was cool because she uh she was cake for halloween so anyway that's cake one of my favorite bands you know if you don't know the song nugget from cake i highly recommend it it was one i played so much on my show like if you're ever angry and you need to just like get your angst out Play Nugget because you can just join in with their feelings of being disgusted with whatever it is. And it's okay. It's not hate to be disgusted with things. It's emotionally sound and healthy. It's not good to hate people. It's not good to cause harm to people. But it is totally healthy and average and actually more awake than most people to actually find discomfort in things that are happening and not just uh, justify them, let them go, uh, be anesthetized by society and just be like, well, I've got this and that. I don't need to worry about that. No, I say justice for all, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the card we got last week and then I'm going to pull another one. But before I do that, I want to set our intention and give us some grounding at the highest level. And then I have a beautiful story to tell you about bunnies. Welcome. Hola. So, let's get that card. 
And then I've got some Rumi Wisdom. And this is Karen Holds Claws Art. This is Marley. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. Let me see what's the name of it. Marley esque, I think it's called. Anyway, I love it. So, one love, everybody, right? Let's get together and feel all right, right? And this is dedicated to all my good friends, you know, that I'm thinking about. Like, especially, um, I brought the turtle energy because I was thinking about my friend uh, from uh, California, Christine Mead. So, uh, I had the turtle out. And I don't know where I put it. I thought I put it out here. Anyway... So imbibing some good turtle energy too, and then the, the hair energy. So let's look at spring and what spring has in store for us in our, our meditation for our practice. And as you're getting settled, as you're trying to find your space, getting your mat out, getting your water, getting what you need, hey everybody, welcome. I would like you just to imbibe that meditative uh, breathing practice that I ask you to use. So that is grounding yourself wherever you're at. So sitting where you feel grounded, where your sits bones can get grounded. You can be in an easy pose right now. So let's all sit in an easy pose where you feel really grounded, right? Because we're in spring. We're wanting our roots to take root. We're wanting that storm not to have taken out our roots and not to have hurt all the little new bunnies and new things out there. So we want to ground everybody, have everybody safe. And ourselves and then as we do then our breath can come from a deeper place breathing in gratitude for the breath always gratitude and then exhaling through pursed lips and why pursed lips and pursed lips are like this like you're blowing out a candle like you're blowing someone a kiss And as you do, I want your intention to be a prayer to someone, a prayer of breath of life, a prayer of, and it doesn't have to be anyone you know. It can be anybody. It can be Bob Marley. You need to send him some breath, you know. And then breathe into your hara. This is your belly button right here. You know, feel your belly button, find it. That's called your hara in Chinese Reiki medicine. All right. Your hara is kind of your, your spiritual center. So you want to ground it. It's also your spiritual, you know, your sacral center in yoga. So just tune into that. Inhale with gratitude. Exhale. Pursed lips with breath of life to someone. Okay. So be singing a Bob Marley song in your mind. Go ahead and if you can type, you can type up a Bob Marley song that you're thinking of. I said one love. You could say, uh, I love, um, let me think about it. I love so much of Bob Marley's music. I hope you can hear the birds. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but the birds are really out. There's so many different kinds. So inspiring. Okay, let me get spring up. There we are, spring. And I'm going to give you a good view of the card. I need a candle. I would like a candle anyway. I have a We'll work on this. I think I can manifest a lighter somewhere in this room. It'll show up. Because <laughs> I want to light my candle. All right, there we are. Look at that. Spring. See your seeds grow. So, all right. 
let's set ourselves and set our prayer then so that we can set the highest intention for our um, divining today. So like I said, find yourself that seated pose and I need to, I need to be that example. Hi Tiffany, welcome. Our spirit today is uh, spring, right? How wonderful. All right, so let's sit up nice and tall, feeling our sits bones grounding, finding your seated position, however it works for you, you know. Work your program, only you can see yourself. That's the beauty of doing this. No one sees you, but you. And I hope you see a beautiful flower blooming in spring when you look at yourself. If not, I want you to pray about it. I want you to pray for healing and for guidance and love and generosity and, and nurturing around that so that you can manifest your highest good. Right? Right. So spring is telling us embrace the change that is on the horizon. Allow your dreams to become reality. Spring is an exciting time because it has so much potential. Animals are coming out of hibernation. Flowers are pushing up through the soil and the days are getting lighter and brighter. The spring card features a wild hair. Because in Celtic animal medicine, the hair brings intuition and rebirth. Hairs are highly fertile, fertile beings, and so their medicine can bring dreams to life. So one of the most beautiful things, um, and I will read the extended message on this, one of the most beautiful things that happened, I went to go plant my garden in the back, and there's a nest of baby hares. I have wild hares in my backyard. So the little bunnies uh, have little bunnies, and I was able to see them. I don't want to disturb them or look at them again, but they were so adorable. They were in a little nest. They were in a little fur nest. It was a fur nest with fur and and stuff and it's so cute so I'm watching them I have binoculars now on them and I am protecting them they're in a gated community private residence no seriously they're in this little gated area that we made for uh, I made last year my neighbor helped me make it which was for my beans but now I was gonna plant peas and uh, he was all bummed that the babies were there but I said I'm just gonna plant a bunch of stuff for them so, Emily, I want you to know that the sunflower seeds that you gave me, the baby, the mama loves them, and I'm going to plant them right at the entrance of her little um, estate she has in the back there with her family and make sure she has lots of greens growing. And then my peas will grow. Everything will grow for me. I'm just going to grow enough for all of us. When we start to look at how we can go towards what is, and not fight it. Like, don't spray a weed. A weed is good. Dandelion ends up healing you from the cancer you get from spraying the spray that you use to kill the weed. So let's just stop the cycle of madness and not use poisons. Please do not use any poisons this spring. You do not need to do that. What you need to do is invite your yoga work, do some chaturangas, get on your knees, pull some weeds, it's exercise. I found when I did yoga that it seemed like when I was in my deepest part of yoga, which was really cool, it was around 2008 and nine. I had a garden and I found myself doing chaturangas to pull weeds and stuff, and no, I didn't use poisons. And my ex-husband has gotten cancer twice and he used Roundup, so, I don't need anybody to tell me a damn thing about Roundup or glyphosate or any of that toxic stuff. 
I know that Mother Earth creates things that are not toxic, and that would be weeds, and that would be greens, and that would be medicine of the earth. So I recommend you go on to archive.org, which is a free online resource. It's a huge library. And look up plant medicine and learn about the plants and how the dandelion root is actually so medicinal and the leaves. It's just amazing. So let's pay attention to what is growing around us and not look at everything as a weed. Like I'm going to go investigate my garden in the front and I'm going to investigate everything and maybe look at it. Like I've got a lot of peppermint I can harvest up there. I'm paying $2.29 for two ounces of peppermint leaf. I think mine's organic. Why? Because I don't spray anything and I know what I buy is organic, but I don't have to pay for it now. So anyway, let's look at our extended meaning and how we can look at spray and that hair energy. And I will post pictures of the bunnies, the hairs. You are ready to bring to life all of your ideas, inspirations, and projects. Well, that's a lot, but that's great, and we can do it, you know what I mean? Because our energy is very vital, and when we use it to stoke our own fire, when we use it to work on our own manifestation, we're not angry because we're not being projectile people. We're not like, why? It's your fault I'm not happy. No, it's your own fault you're not happy. We call it cleaning your own side of the street. So focus on you. If you need to, look in the mirror and get straight with whatever's going on. If you feel like you're spinning out in some way. Just get real with yourself because you know what? It's a shortcut. Everybody has problems. But if you walk through the eye of the needle, you get a sew quicker. You know what I mean? Just don't even bother with the other stuff. doesn't work. And be blatantly true and honest and transparent in your life. It will serve you so well. I try to do that. So I ask that of my friends and others to do that too because it is so freeing. When this card appears, you are moving into a space that allows you to really grow, expand, and create a new way you've never done before. So I get to create a new way we've never done before. And so it is true. This is a new, a new time. There are opportunities for abundance, including financial growth. And if you're starting something new, prepare for major expansion in your life and soul. So I am creating the Hop Salon, which is the boutique and the swing and hot spot for groovy, in touch, enlightened, hip people who want to share art. So I'm going to be doing a digital gallery show here with the artist, uh, Karen Holzklaw. I'm going to be featuring some artists on the porch and we're going to do a live thing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be different. I don't know what it's going to look like. But I am a conduit and a curator of art and artists, and that's what I also do in addition to using divination and yoga for a balanced life, right? Because my inner hiking is my start of every project that I get to manifest this spring. Because I started from, and, and you can too, right? That's why we move. Because we move our body to get any of the ick off, anything that isn't us. Get that out of here. Move your body. It can be walking. It can be running in place. It can be jump rope. Whatever works for you. I don't care. Whatever gets your body moving, do that. Move it. And then meditate at a deeper level because you've shaken off everything and you can get into that deeper level, right? So come from this inside. So then when you manifest, which is asking the spirit world for what you want, and on my website, Inner Hiking, I talk about how to do that using the Astro Shaman's tools so that you can come from a place of benevolence. One, you can burn sage, burn cedar, burn something, at, and then do the manifesting prayer, which is divine light and consciousness. And we need to do this now anyway for our work. Divine light and consciousness, spirit that I am, 
in spirit that you are and spirit that our universe is, please saturate me with the maximum amount of divine light and consciousness that serves the highest good. And so it is, and so it shall be. Aho. Uh -huh. Morning, Ariel. So I love to do this prayer too, which is part of the, um, the book that I'm reading, and then I'll read the final paragraph. But guardians of the four corners, mother in the earth, father in the sky, angels, ancestors, sacred ones, I call on you and welcome you here now. So I hope you've had some type of sacred journey or some type of connection with your sacred elders and the people who are your angels and ancestors and your spirit guides and that you can use your time in yoga to connect with them, right? Use that as an opportunity, especially in Shavasana. That's where you're going to really um, get into a connection with that spirit realm. So that's when you can say, make sure my seeds are protected and that my projects grow to the highest good for all concerned. And so it is and so it shall be. Aho. And ask for that protection. Be the actor, not the reactor. How can you take something, as my mom would say, you have control over everything that goes on inside your skin. So if someone says something to you, you choose how to react to that from a place of your own adult space, not the child, wounded child. Sometimes we do because we're wounded and we are in pain or we're triggered. Understand, work through it. Find your inner group, find your inner space, make a sacred space in your house, always Always have a sacred space in your home. That is a chair, a lamp, a light source, and a couple books, a table. Make sure you take care of yourself. Never deny your sacred space or your need for your privacy, for your connection with your spirit realm. Never deny that. Because people will try to take that away from you and d deny your ability to be quiet to hear spirit, to really connect, to have the opportunity to do your yoga. My good friend who's a yoga um, friend, uh, who I did my yoga training with, Christine Mead, she has such a great yoga room and she, it's really sacred and she's a good, you know, sometimes you don't even know, it's by your actions that you lead. And that is always a memory of mine. I've known her for 20 years. And I always remember how she created space, how she created sacred space. I observed, I learned from my friends, mentors, young, small, big, tall. All people are my mentors that I choose to learn from. And if I choose to learn from it, I'm the winner and I grow, right? And then my, my garden will grow. And that's how that works. So let's see what else our extended meaning is. When the spring card arrives, in the future position of a spread, or as the last card in a reading, it can also indicate that the coming spring will usher in important energies in regards to your question or intentions. Well, my question and intentions, I guess I would say, is for an abundant spring, for a, an opportunity to really come from a true space. And when we plant seeds of truth and honesty, then what we sow will grow and be even brighter and lighter. So let's do that, okay? Let's use a spring to sow seeds of honesty, truth, brightness, and how can you be a light and how can you shine bright, right? If you just, you know, one of the coolest things I've heard in, um, I met with my friend John Flynn, who is the, uh, if you don't know the farmer's market, you can order stuff and they'll drop it off. But I got my elderberry syrup, I got my maple syrup, and I got my sassafras root. And so I am set with everything I need for good 
good healing energy and good stuff. And so you want to think about what you're planting this spring and plant good. And I was telling him, I'm like, sweet potatoes. It's what you need to plant. Sweet potatoes are it. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to plant a lot of sweet potatoes at my farm. And he's like 75. He's all excited to see his grandkids. And, you know, it's been really hard on him not being around his grandkids. So I just want to honor our elders and from everywhere, Navajo Nation elders, to all the elders, every elder, what my work is with Inner Hiking and our tech heroes is about the elders and that when an elder dies, a library burns. So if anybody can reach out and capture wisdom from their elders in their family or different things of nuggets, start doing that because it's a beautiful time we won't have again and um, those memories will be cherished. So journal, talk with your elders, have a nice talk, reminisce, write some things down, maybe make a poem, come to the hop salon, do some poetry and some music. All right, let's get to our divination for our day is to see your seeds grow. So I've got bunnies in the backyard, so I'm going to plant the seeds right after. I'm going to kind of plant them while the bunnies are growing. So we'll, we'll watch those seeds grow for sure. So let's get doing some uh, yoga. So let's sit back on our mat and sit up nice and tall. We're going to do some seated yoga to start with. Open up our chest. We'll do some Kinyokoho seated. So it's going to be more of a restorative, right? We want to stay rooted and grounded. Keeping our, um, our breathing practice going. So what's our breathing practice? Our breathing practice is to let our belly button be loose. So check in. Is your belly stuck up underneath your rib cage? Well, that means you're scared and you're freaked out and something's not working and you're going to choke on your own air because you don't you won't even be able to get it down and so I've had that happen and I was like what's going on with me why am I choking on air like I couldn't figure it out but it was totally being freaked out okay <laughs> and it happens you can be in a place where you're not feeling safe so hopefully everybody's feeling in a good safe space where they can hear the birds in their background where they can be in their shelter in place space and be of the highest good for their body, for their mind, and their soul right now. So breathe into that hara. Let your jaw be loose. Check in. Check in from the top of your head. Lean back into your sits bones. Check in with the top of your head. Okay? Take a little scrub on the top of your head. Ah, that feels good. Let it go go of anything that's blocking you from spiritual energy right any guilt or shame that might be saying you know we're all sinners we're all screwed up okay I don't know anybody who's not got problems who's not done something wrong who's not done cheated steal lie whatever it is I don't care what your flavor is just know what your stuff is and work on it that's all I'm doing so let go of any of that guilt and shame and scrub it off the top of your head and only put in good thoughts. Choose positive thoughts. My mom said, what you think of will grow and expand. So as you plant your seeds, how can you also plant seeds in your mind that will grow and expand that will be of the highest vibration? How can you, like the Native Americans, Pray over your seeds that you sow and look at them every day with love and, and understanding and really be there for your, you know, for your, your seeds and really connect with them at the highest level. So let's sit back, come in, look at your drishti point, let's scrub off the top of our head here, let your jaw be loose. Inhale through the nose. Let your breath come in across your sinuses, invigorating your brain cells and coming down. Exhale through pursed lips.
Lean back. Remember, your spine is a divining rod opening you up to spirit world. Let your breath open your brain up to what the universe has for you. Scrub it down. Release it off. Release off anything that is on your mind, in your in your temples, and release that. Let that go. You know, you can rub your, your ears and let your jaw be loose, and that's really nice. I mean, you'd be surprised how much tension you have there, right? Just try to release that. Looks like we got another storm coming in. We had a big storm last night. So rub that. Have you ever heard of cranial sacral therapy? Well, you can look it up online and give yourself some therapy. Rub out that tension out of the back of your neck. Rub it in with your thumbs right there. Put your fingers on the back. What does it do? It strengthens your hands, right? Because I'm always telling you to do chaturanga. Okay, lean your head forward. Do a chin tuck. And then bring your head back up and open it up. Open up the chest. Open up the arm. Open up the head. Lean it back. Look up. Good. Come forward. Bring your hands out. And now get everything else off your neck. Work that neck. And as you scrub it off, lean it to one side. Make your back. Good. Bring your head to center. Inhale, exhale, turn your head to the other side and wipe it off. Be gentle with yourself. You know, you're stretching your neck here. You want to have a loose jaw, not clenching. You don't want to be dragging it over too far. You want to keep your yourself centered. Not up here. But down with the shoulders, lean over, and just wipe off anything you don't need. Here's where you can grab that elbow and pat yourself on the back. Good job. How many people are doing yoga right now? We get to do yoga while it's raining out and the birds are getting a bath and I've fed the birds. And I have squirrels and bunnies. I saw two squirrels today. So good job, squirrel mama. I have to say I'm a good squirrel mama. And I'm going to take care of those bunnies, not, not too much. Just enough to make sure if they need anything, pat your other side. Don't forget both sides. Bring that elbow in. Feel that opening of that shoulder, wherever you're at. You have to tap your shoulder, tap the front, I don't care. But pat yourself and sit up straight and breathe. This is yoga, right? Yes, it is. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Really allowing yourself to ground. Okay, let everything off your chest. Tap the chest. Tap the shoulders. Bring your arms out so you can tap your shoulders and lift your arms, right? Tap the front. Right there, there's a lot of tension right in here. For me, maybe yours is another place. Sometimes you tap the sternum here, so that helps you bring that up. So a lot of times people sit it like this. You guys would think, wow, she doesn't look very good, does she? No, and it seems exaggerated, but it's not. It's actually straight posture. This is not. I mean, it's okay to be relaxed, but it's important to understand to engage all your muscles to have your body be engaged in the process so we're just tapping sitting in a nice seated position grounding ourselves thinking about spring think about the plants we're going to plant actively setting intention for our practice tapping out anything we don't need in our arms really letting go of anything just let it go how many times have you ever done this Okay then, alrighty, yes, just, just try that, try it, I swear it's good, it, it's like, wow, power, right, like, in, think of something you need to let go of, okay, there we go, alright, and moving right along, and it invigorates your hands, gets the blood pumping in your fingers, all those tendons, 
Let's take our hands and bring them into prayer pose and sit back and we'll do some Kenyoko Ho. Okay? So bring your thumbs down and we will work the bottom part of our body. Bring your thumbs down, bring your elbows in, shoulders down, right? <sighs> Jaw is loose. Let your belly be loose. Sit back. It's good. And then bring your palms together and push the palms into each other. So here it is relaxed. Push them in. Make them be level. And then push your chin back. Lean back. Come into prayer pose. Is your belly trying to suck up? Mine did. Let it be loose. Let your jaw be loose. Inhale, exhale, let your breath come in through the nose. Out through pursed lips. In through the nose. Out through pursed lips. As you exhale through your pursed lips, bring your belly button to your spine. Derek talked about this breathing method that I've been using myself which is to inhale deeply through the nose and exhale through the mouth, really exhaling. Every last bit of anything out of your lungs, not letting anything settle in your lungs. Actively exhaling. I just felt my neck pop because of that. So as you breathe, you add air to your spine, your life force. That's your life energy, your divining rod. Let your breath invigorate your mind. Put fire in your belly, right? Stoke your internal furnace. This is your time to stoke your furnace. What do you like doing? What did you always like to do? Do it. Make time for yourself. Balance. Do balanced things. But balance it with fun and good things that help you grow. And help your projects grow. For the highest good of all concerns, so it is and so it shall be. A hoe. And that's what can cover it all. And if you don't want to use a hoe, you can use whatever you want. I just use that because it's Native American. And I personally find it beautiful. All right. Let's reach our hands out into eagle. And reach our hands out. Oh my gosh. Open up the chest. So exaggerated opening is boom. Try to do that. And then come back to center. Reach the hands out. So palms are up. Reach out. Hey, how are you doing, Karen? Is everything okay? You like your Marley poster in the background? All right, so we're just in a nice seated pose. We're engaging our core because we're sitting up straight. So just in a nice seated pose like this, we're engaging the core. We're opening up our wings. We're opening up our palms. We're reaching out, we're opening up our sternum and reaching our palms out, right? Good, thank you. Okay, reach out, bring that chin in, reach the palms out. If your shoulders are up like this, check in. Bring them down, it's okay. Just check it and bring them down and open up those palms. Reach out to each side of the room. As if somebody could just pull your arms out of the sockets. And then breathe in. Open that chest. Breathe into the sternum. Breathe into the spine. Breathe into the chest. And all those vertebrae. Inhale, exhale. And then bring your right arm under your left. Windmill arms. Bring the elbows together. Back of palms can come together. Or... If you combined, that's great. Bring that together. Now this is where bringing the arms up by bringing those elbows up. Now you're still sitting straight 
and you're just bringing those elbows up. What that does is that opens up your back. Opens up the back of your lungs. This is important right now, especially as we look at lung health. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. Because I think it's really important for lung health. As you open up that back lung. As you do a lot of things. You can do T's too. So here we are in eagle pose. Inhale, exhale, jaws loose. Push those elbows up. Exaggerate it. So you can really open them and then push the palms away as you do level it up you don't need to have your shoulders up shoulders down elbows up palms away and you can just sit here and breathe as long as you're intentional with your yoga pose and you're set properly you don't need to push it to like beyond what you need this is a huge amount of work right here to be pushing up those elbows and opening up that back and pushing the arms away and sitting up straight. Let your belly be loose, check in, jaws loose. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth, up with the elbows, out with the hands. Engage your core, hinge forward at the hips. Now, just hinge forward to wherever your edge is. If you feel like you're going to fall over, that's your edge. Just stay there. <sighs> Believe me, this is a big workout right here. And this is only if you want more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then go ahead and surrender down. Roll that back. Feel the difference. Oh, feel the difference in your shoulders. Round your back. Bring your elbows down a little bit. Push your hands away. Breathe into your shoulders. Let your jaw be loose. Let your belly be loose. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, let that breath guide you, and then gently come back up, lift up those elbows, push the hands away, bring those elbows in, and bring the palms in, and squeeze in, and squeeze in deep, like that kitten that just went by, I really wanted to pick him up, so if I just look at him, and I squeeze in, I could really get a good squeeze here because I love that kitten. So squeeze in those arms. Squeeze it. Engage your core. Let your belly be loose. You can rock and roll like me. Squeeze in to the hands. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Squeeze a little harder. It's better. And then release and unwind. Let your wings fly. Oh, it feels so good. I hope you feel that. And open up those wings and just fly. Open up your wings. Open up your wings. Open up those shoulders. And open up the arms. Circle them back. Palms out. Circle them forward. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Shake it out. Shake the head. Shake the arm, shake the shoulders, roll the shoulders back. Be gentle. We did a lot on those shoulders. Roll them back. Up and back, up and back, forward, elbows out. Jaw loose. Posture's good. All right, come to a nice seated position. Check in with your belly. Inhale, exhale. Somebody here is birdies. We're going to do a little um, neck work. So let's do, and then we're going to do the other side of our eagle. I'm not forgetting. I just want us to open up our neck and do some neck work for our grounding. So coming into your nice straight position, let those shoulders come up and back. 
Jaws loose. Tuck the tail. Lean back. Eye gaze to Drishy point right. Bring your chin back. It may look you may look silly with your chin back. I know I do double chin. I don't care. But bring that chin back. It helps open up the back of the neck. Right? So if I'm like this, my neck is more curved. I kind of tuck. Eye gaze, drishy point. Tuck a little bit. Bring it back. Check my shoulders. Check my hands. Bring my elbows in. Let my core be loose. Let my hara be loose. <sighs> Jaw be loose. See if you can hear the birds. Lean back, put your eye gaze at your drifty point, hands on your knees or thighs. Feel your energy. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Grounding yourself, feeling your roots, right? And then Tucking the chin, gently eye gaze to the drishti point. Bring that chin into the center of your sternum, right there in that little pocket. But don't lean to it, stay straight. Lean into your, into your arms, right, or your uh, knees. And then bring the head down. Bring your hands out. Bring them behind your head. Bring your elbows in. And you can gently tuck down. Bring that chin down. Letting your jaw be loose. Letting the weight on your hands drop your head forward. Feeling the opening in the back. And then rolling down, taking a nice roll forward, finding your edge, breathing into your back, belly is loose, opening the spine from the base to the top, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, tuck that chin, good, opening that spine, feeling that life force opening up. Inhale, exhale, and then come up, uncoil. Let's get going on some yoga. Right? I hope somebody's going to join me from somewhere else. I hope we're good. Okay. And where is our spring card? You may or may not be able to see that. There we go, that's a little better. Okay. Alright, All right. let's get into our cat and cow, and then we're going to do some flow. So, coming into your a seated pose here, and checking in with your hands, letting your hands be clawed open, and opening up your arms, opening up your chest, looking up. Shaking those hands, shaking those wrists, shaking the shoulders, shaking the head, getting yourself ready for our table, cat and cow, to our supported down dog, to our pigeon. Love our pigeon. Claw those hands. Claw the hands into the mat, right? 
both palms down, airspace in between, right? Get your knees set up in alignment with your wrist. Bring it up and align it back. Good. Bring the other one up, align it back. Good. Check in, are they in alignment? Is your shoulder right under your wrist? Is your hips right in alignment? Looks like mine are a little wide. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. My hips aren't that wide. It, you want to see straight, not that, right? It's just whatever your body is, you're aligning with your body. There's no aligning with anything but you. That's the cool thing. So remember to have your hands clawed in. Elbow creases come forward, so not this. You're going to get knocked down. Elbow creases forward, right? And then bring yourself back into alignment to a flat table, not cat. All right, so check it, or cow. Elbow creases forward, claw your hands in, knees in alignment with your biceps. And feet flat, ankles flat. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Push those wrists in, elbow creases forward. Push the knees in. Tuck the belly. Check in. This is where we tuck that chin like we did, but we're tucking it now and pushing the knees in and pushing the wrists in and looking up at the belly button. And our eye gaze is at our drifty point. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Really open up that back body. Good. Claw the hands in. Flip the belly. Unzip the spine. Push the knees in. Open up the throat. Look up. Eye gaze to the sky. Tongue out. Lion's roar. Ah, good, and push in, push the wrists in, tuck the chin, push the knees in, wrists in alignment with your shoulders, ears in alignment with your biceps, as you push your wrists in and tuck the chin, bringing those ears in alignment with your biceps, inhale, exhale as you arch, arch, arch and then claw the hands flip the belly drop uh, the belly unzip the spine look up throat open eye gaze to the drizzly point or the sky push the wrists in push the knees in arch the back tongue out lines were Tuck the chin, drop the head, drop the shoulders, drop everything. Just be like a, have you ever seen a hound dog sleep standing up? I have. So it's kind of like, or cow or whatever. You just kind of drop in. Take a rest here at center. Let your jaw be loose. Go ahead and put the toes together. Elbows out or um, knees out to the side, hands out just a little farther to give yourself a little more stretch here. Toes together, push back with the buttocks towards the heels as you do. You can reach those hands out farther to really stretch yourself as you use the opposites of the energy reaching down towards the heels and the arms being dragged back and opening up those shoulders, opening up that heart center. And you can use a pillow here or a prop or a blanket or a um, bolster or a uh, block. But what you want to do is let your neck be loose and let your shoulders rest. We've done a lot of shoulder work and a lot of neck work. So here you want to drop into Mother Earth. Ask for your prayers, for your plantings, that they be bountiful, that you have the wisdom and the knowledge to plant the proper seeds 
to nurture your projects. This is where you ask your ancestors and guides, runners, sacred ones, come for the highest good. Please guide my projects. Protect them for the highest good. See them to fruition. Help me have the vision to see and the courage to continue on the path that you've chosen and let me see that for the highest good of all concerned. So it is and so it shall be. And then breathe into your chest and let go of your shoulders and your neck and turn your head to the other side. Make any adjustments you need to. Again, this is a really dropping into Mother Earth. Time to release, let go, reconnect. Scan your body, let your belly be loose, drop in. Go into your mind, your drifty point, and breathe. Let nothing distract you. Be in your body, be present in this moment. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And gently come up. Now we're going to come up to our standard table pose to our down dog, to our one legged up dog, or just a one legged down dog to a pigeon. Or you can just take it however it works for you. We're going to go from table to pigeon, t table to down dog pigeon. So elbow creases forward, claw your hands in. Knees are in alignment with your hips. Feet are flat. Inhale, exhale. Look down between your thumbs. Tuck the toes on the right. Tuck the toes on the left. Try to get all ten toes. Inhale, exhale. Check in with the jaw and the belly. Elbow creases forward. Eye gaze down at the thumbs. We're going to do our step down dog where we do just our hips first. Inhale, exhale, hips go high, push those hips up, then second, push the wrists in, let the ears come in alignment with your biceps, open up that chest, drop it down to the mat, feel that opening, oh. inhale, exhale, drop the heels down, oh, that feels so good, and really push back on those heels, let the buttocks go high to the sky, drop the chest down. If you need to take a knee here, you can. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You can bicycle your legs here. Go ahead and kick the left leg up to high one-legged downward dog. And you can kick the heel into the buttocks. And look underneath the armpit of the left, opening up, giving yourself a side stretch. Breathing air into the hip, into the side body, into the spine. Inhale, exhale. Kick that leg back up into the sky. Look between your thumbs. Inhale, exhale, and then gently bring it forward to pigeon. As you bring it forward to pigeon, find use your arms to guide yourself down. Breathe. Gentle, gentle. Knee goes flat on the right. Top of the foot goes flat on the right. Adjust yourself down. Open up the hip on that right side. Make any adjustments. Rock and roll back and forth. You can put a pillow in underneath your hip if you need to. A buttocks. I like to come up on my fingertips. <sighs> Breathe into your jaw. Open up your chest. Let that leg open up. Open up that thigh. Open up the chest. Come onto your fingertips. Really open. Look up. Let it be a back bend for you of wherever proportion it is. But you're going to look up. So many times we don't open up that throat chakra. And reach up and come forward. And wherever you come forward is great. Wherever your edge is, it could be here. If your edge is here, that's fine. You can use your arms to come down. 
wherever it works for you. You can use a pillow. I know Jeff, one of my clients, loves to use a pillow. This was the pillow he used when he was a client, when he used to come over. Now he just watches stuff, and that's cool. I love Jeff. But he was really successful of opening up and curing his sciatica by doing pigeon. So here you are, you're opening up the hip of this side. Like I said, you can put a pillow in underneath this hip if you need to, if it's not going down, if it's causing you discomfort. And then open up that chest, open up the throat. And then surrender down and release. So if you're on a pillow, that's great. Oh, it's just like, can you just feel your spine opening up and releasing all that tension? And if you don't have a pillow, you can adjust to wherever it works for you, you know. You can come onto your elbows, right? And find this is a resting pose. This is good to bring the elbows out and drop them down. It opens up the shoulders more. And then surrender down to the mat and then bring your hands to prayer position. This opens up the back of the arms. Oh, it's a little hard on me. Hmm. Wherever you're at, you want to surrender. Let your jaw be loose. Good. And then gently come out by gently coming up. Come up onto your hands. Come up onto the heels. And gently roll back out. Letting that hip open up, right? Ooh, and come back. And let's come into our butterfly, right? A lot of butterflies are happening right now. So let's open up. Feel the energy you've created in your body, right? So, sit those sits bones. Can you feel those sits bones underneath your butt? Feel those ground into the ground. Feel the bottom of your feet, right? Full circle energy, your whole body, right? And you feel the warmth. You feel what you've created in your body. Thank your feet for what they do for you. Thank your body for what it does for you. Thank your breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth, right? And when we breathe in, it's gratitude. Gratitude that we have breath, right? Be exaggerated about it. Lift those shoulders. But as you exhale, purse your lips and let those shoulders drop. Let yourself ground. Come back into your seated position. Let your palm bottom of your feet be together, feel those feet, adjust your butterfly to where it works for you. So sometimes it's way out here and sometimes it's in more. It could be with a pillow, wherever your butterfly is. You want to rock back and forth, feel your bottom and those muscles in the hips that we were working on. And we're going to do the other side here in a second, but we're just rocking and rolling. Check in with your jaws, your jaw tight or loose. How is your breath? How is your belly? Good. I'm going to just relax a little bit myself. Alright. Rock and roll. Jaws loose. Now, you can do two types. First, we're going to do a little more of a supported pull in. I want you to feel the posture and then we can just roll down gently into our into our little caterpillar combination butterfly so bring your feet together right and bring your hands to your your ankles your thighs your knees your calves wherever you're at check in your belly's loose straighten up that spine good use wherever you're at to help you move forward opening up the inside of your your hips 
in your groin area. So bring in those elbows wherever you're at. So you're locking in. See that? Locking in. And then, let me do it on my ankles. And tuck the chin. And then lean forward. What you're doing is you're opening up your tor you're opening these hips up. And you're opening your chest towards Mother Earth. So think about your prayer for your all your plants. May they grow. And you can rock and roll the hips here. You can lean forward more, trying to get flatter, trying to open more of that space in your hips. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Good. And then surrender down to your butterfly wherever you're at. Check in with your legs. Rock and roll. Make any adjustments. You're going to come forward. Roll that back over. Come down. <clears throat> Surrender down wherever your head hits. You're going to dangle over. You're going to feel a stretch in the back of the legs. You're going to hopefully feel that opening in your hips. And just surrender. Wherever you're at, surrender. Try to breathe and release. Check in with your jaw. Check in with your mind. Let it be clear. Focus on your breath. Focus on you and your seeds, your beautiful flower. Gently come up and roll up and bring your knees together. Bring your hands behind you and shake those legs out. Shake, shake, shake. And rock and roll the knee, the legs back and forth so you can feel those hips really getting a nice little massage there, right? Good. All right, you ready? We're gonna get back on all fours, do our table to our down dog, to our pigeon on the, um, hmm. which side did we do pigeon? Hmm. I think we did pigeon on the left. Anyway, we'll figure it out. If I do pigeon twice on one side on accident, Bob's talking. Bob's talking. Hi, Bob. All right, claw your hands, elbow creases forward, knees in alignment, feet flat. Good. Eye gaze to the thumbs. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Step down, dog, so we tuck our toes. Good. Tucking those toes feels good. Inhale, exhale, and the hips go directly to the sky. Knees stay bent. Arms stay where they're at. You just lift the hips. Head stays where it's at. So just hips in the air. Like you don't care. Push those hips higher. Right? Just hips. Pushing the wrists in, pushing the hips up. Keeping the knees bent. Push the wrists in. Ears go in alignment with your biceps. Push that chest down. Good. And then stretch the heels back as you look back. Let those heels go back to the mat. Bicycle your legs. Claw your hands. Elbow creases forward. Really opening up that back body. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Stretch it back. Come forward with your opposite leg. I believe mine is the right. I'm not sure. I think it is. And it is because I remember now the camera. 
So then drop the left knee, drop the left foot, let that left front body open up. So you're opening up this front hip to the ground, right? Because we're in spring right now, we're trying to ground ourselves. Now, if your hip on this side does not hit the ground and you're not squared hips, you can use a pillow here to give yourself a cushion like that. And sometimes that helps to square your hips, open this up better, and you can use anything there. I'm gonna just try to open up here. Find your edge, breathe in to where you're at. Let your jaw be loose, your eye gaze to your drifty point. Come on to your fingertips. Push into those fingers. Open up the spine, bring the shoulders down. Bring the throat open, eye gaze to the sky, lean back. Open up the chest and the throat. Inhale, exhale, and then bring the arms out. And bring it up, reach up, and then hinge forward at the hips. Coming forward wherever it works for you. It could be on your fingertips. It could be coming down farther. It could be a pillow that you surrender onto. That's always so yummy here. So taking a pillow and just coming down hmm. and breathing and letting that hip release letting the shoulders be loose letting your eye gaze be to your drishti point let yourself just surrender and be at this point of rest rest and release rest and release Scan your body, let go of anything you're not needing. Let go of that jaw, let go of that, those clenched hands. If you've got clenched hands, let go of your shoulders. Roll those shoulders back. Gently release anything you don't need. Just drop in to Mother Earth. Ah, let the breath release you, inhale, exhale. Good. Another breath. Just letting it all go. You don't need to know, but you need to let it go. A lot of emotional body energy is stuck in the hips. So keep focusing on your jaws and breathing and releasing and breathing and releasing. Good. And then gently and slowly come up. Roll up out of it. Come on to your elbows. on your hands ah, and roll over onto your buttocks gently let your hip get some blood bring your leg around and then shake it out so we can do some poses for our since we're not going to stand we're going to do our standing poses seated right right so that means we're going to sit on our mat and as if we're standing. So this is not a standing pose. This is a standing pose. So let's get into our standing pose. Let's pull the flesh away from our buttocks. Feel those, those bones that feel like little blades that are your hips. Let them get deep into the mat as if you're grounding them deep into the mat. Ground that stuff in there. Good, sit that up. Maybe I can show you from, yeah, I think that's good. Anyway, you'll get it. My back is trying to be straight, and so what you wanna do is bring your ankles together, heels together, follow the feet together, ankles together, knees together. Engage the core, how do you do that? You can push, the elbows are back here, 
and you push into the mat. This is stick pose. So think about a stick you see in the in the woods. So inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel those bones in your butt and your hip digging deep into the mat. The back of the heels are digging into the mat. Toes are spread wide. Push the fingertips into the mat, pushing that sternum forward. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And engage your core and come up out of those hips. One straight line. Ears are in alignment with your biceps. You can grab your hands together, point finger to the sky like a rocket. Come back, bring those ears into alignment, and just practice sitting in your stick pose. This works your back, works your arms. Check in, breathe in. Are your feet really standing? Are you standing? Are you pushing those heels in? Are the back of the legs pushing into the mat? Are your sits bones reaching in? Are your shoulders down, but your arms are reaching up? Straight back. Inhale, exhale, and hinge forward at the hips. Good. Wherever you land, you can land here, here. Wherever it's at is where you're at. What I want you to do is actively be in the pose by pulling yourself down to your position. So if you're here, straighten that back. And bring yourself straight and you'll feel an intense stretch in the back body so it could be here you don't want to do it at your joints but either the calf or the thigh or the bottom of the feet as long as your back is straight right and so you can just rest into this straight pose this gets all the stuck chi off the back of the body this is fun to do in the bathtub Try it in the bathtub. It's a nice thing to do in the bathtub because you are nice and warm and sudsy and you can really gently stretch your muscles there in a nice way. So try it out. Find your stick pose and breathe and release the stuck chi on the back of the legs. If you don't feel it, you need to because it's good medicine. Inhale, exhale, really lean forward. The more you lean forward, the more you're going to feel this, whoa, wake up in the back of the legs. That's what you want. Wake it up. Then you can roll the back forward and come forward as much as you want and roll forward and feel then your hips opening up. Find your edge. Breathe where you're at. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Good. Come up. Ooh, nice. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Bring in your left leg. Bring in that left foot into the inside. And rotate the right heel out. This again, you can put a pillow under here or a block, or a book, or anything underneath here to help steady yourself, right, if you're off. And then what you want to do is you want to take the sternum and keep your shoulders level, but rotate. Oh, I've got a sore short back right there. Rotate so that your sternum is towards your toes. That way you set the pose. It's a lot different when you set it. Set it, get it ready, get your body set, feel it, good, take your time, inhale, exhale, reach the hands to the sky, reach them up, rotate the hips, sternum towards the knee, eye gaze through the hands, hinge at the hips, fold forward over that straight leg, reaching over it, sternum towards the thigh. So you're rotating that body and you're bringing the elbows out as you pull yourself down. And you can do the full pose, which is the Ashtanga toe hold and take the hand underneath the calf, keeping it straight. 
Inhale, exhale. Wherever you're at, just keep bending and feeling the straightness if you want more. This is the twist, which feels amazing, but you gotta work your body to where you feel comfortable. So wherever you feel comfortable and your body says yes, then you can. But really, I don't want anyone to have injury. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And as you come out, reach that left hand up as if a rainbow. Coming up. Reach it up and back. Come back onto your fingers. Take your legs, shake them out. Shake, shake, shake. Good. Bring that left foot into your standing pose. So pushing that heel out as if you're standing, letting the toes be spread wide, letting that sits bones reach in there, right? And then you bring in the foot into the groin. Check in, where's your degrees that you feel works for you? Find that edge. Set it, good. There you are. Sternum high. Inhale, exhale. Go ahead and place your hand on your thigh or your calf and your hand behind and keep the sternum high and rotate that sternum towards your extended leg. There you are. That's the body memory you want for starting your forward bend on the left side. <sighs> Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Engage your core. Reach up, Ooh, reach up to the sky, reach up high out of those sits bones. Look up through the hands, reach up as if we're in a, a standing, for a standing, um, a standing pose. You're reaching up through the sky, but we're on our sits bones. Reach, inhale, exhale, and then look down towards that extended leg. Reach the hands out, reach, reach, reach. Open up that side body, slowly reach more. Find your spot, come down. You want your back flat, come down wherever it works for you, flat back. So it could be here, could be here, could be here. And as you do it, breathe and find your edge. Full pose is the Ashtanga. So hold with a twist where it opens up the side body and you take your palm on the left, put it underneath the calf. Ashtanga to hold on the right and you gently come down as you do. You look up underneath that armpit and you lean back, giving your spine a nice twist. Breathing as you reach down, breathing. Finding your edge, jaws loose, find it, breathe, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then bring that right hand up like a rainbow, bring it up, or like a ray of sunshine, right? Good, bring your arms up. Bring it all in, bring it down into your crown, into your mind, all the way down. Good. Shake it out. Good. Bring your legs out, shake it out. Ready for a little cobra? Let's open up our, our, our upper body and our strengthen our lower back and give us a little cobra energy. All right. So let's come on to our bellies. So, it's gonna feel good. Really stretch out, let your body stretch. You can do that by extending your legs, kicking the feet out, right? Coming onto your elbows. Let your feet be together, your thighs be together, your toes together, okay? We're gonna come into Sphinx pose first and give ourselves a little opening in our upper upper hips, 
and then our back. So come into Sphinx Pose. Your shoulder can be right out into your um, elbow. So you need to adjust that. Claw your hands in. Good. There you are. And then open up the chest. Pull the shoulders down. Pull the elbows back. Go ahead and turn to one side, looking over the shoulder of the left. Inhale, exhale. Let that hip drop down on the right. And then center, and then turn to the right. Jaws loose. Let the hip drop down on the left. Good. Good, all right, let's come down to the mat. Drop your head down on the mat, forehead down. Kick your feet out, let your hands go flat. Let your head turn to one side. <sighs> shake your hips, shake your feet, shake your legs. And then point your toes and point your legs Toes together, feet together, knees together, thighs together. Zip it up as if you were a mermaid. Hold that. Take your hands and bring them up. Back of palms up. Bring your thumbs in underneath your armpits. Squeeze underneath those armpits. Give yourself a little massage. Inhale, exhale. Turn your head to the other side. And then place your forehead down on the mat. Take your thumbs, place them down on the mat right next to your underarm pits. Claw your hands in. Bring your shoulders up and then bring them down. Bring your elbows in and your shoulders down. Claw your hands in. Push the top of your feet into the mat. Push the top of your ankles. Push the tops of your knees. Push your pubic bone in. Claw your hands. Bring your elbows down. As you do, slowly uncoil your cobra. Allow your cobra to open naturally, looking up through your drishti point, pushing into your feet, pushing into your knees, lifting your hands to know you're at your edge of your cobra. Don't push yourself too far. If you can't hold yourself up with your back like this in any space, that's your edge. Could be here, could be here, could be higher. Wherever you are engaging that band of muscles that's right here in your lower back is where Cobra likes to be. So shoulders down, elbows down, hands clawed in, but you can release them if you need to at any point during the pose and push more into your feet and push more into that pubic bone. Inhale, exhale. Eye gaze to the sky, throw it open. And release, uncoil, let your head go to one side. Let your shoulders release by putting your hands down on each side of your body. Oh my gosh, let your heels open up, let your legs open up, breathe into that sternum. So good. Let it all go as if you're just taking a moment just to be completely let go. Good. We're almost to Shavasana. So let's bring our hands in again. Put our forehead down. Kick our feet out. Bring our thumbs in alignment with our underarm pits. Claw our hands in. Heel comes in, airspace in between our palms. Shoulders come down, elbows come in, right? Strong Cobra. Kick those toes out and those legs, ballerina. Point your toes, bring your feet together, bring your knees together, bring your thighs together. Push down on the front of the legs and the pubic bone. Push down on the hips as you do. Claw the hands in. Bring the shoulders down. Bring the elbows back. 
Uncoil your sternum and your spine and your throat and your eyes and your head. Unlock your head. Release your jaw. Eye gaze to the sky. Palms can come off the ground. Inhale, exhale. And then release, uncoil, oh, drop it down. And let your hands go back, shoulders release. If you're practicing with somebody, it's really nice for somebody to come over and step on your back or give you a back massage. This feels good because you've done some good work in the upper body. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And for those of us who don't have anyone to do that, we're going to do it ourselves because we can. So roll over onto your back. <sighs> roll onto your back. Put your knees up. Let the lower back feel the ground. That just feels good. That's our counter pose, right? Okay. Now, tuck your chin by interlocking your fingers underneath your back of your head and put your thumbs down your neck. Elbows out, shoulders are relaxed. Eye gaze to the sky. Feet hip width apart. Jaw loose. Inhale, exhale, gently bring your head up, tuck the chin, and give yourself a nice stretch from the neck all the way down that middle back. Tuck the chin in, really lift it. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then release down one vertebrae at a time. Good. Feel how flat you can come and then let your head come to a natural rest. Breathe into your chest. Gentle, gentle. Bring your knees in. Good. Jaws loose. Eye gaze to the sky. Feet together. Knees together. Rock and roll your back. And breathe as you rock and roll those hips. Good. You can open up the hips here. Feels really good. And let them go. Release anything in those hips you don't need. Good. Oh, that feels good. Let's do happy baby, shall we? Happy babies are the best. I have baby bunnies in my backyard. They're super cute. I looked at them today. They were, they were moving around in their little fur den. They, I could just see the movement. They're so cute. I can't wait to see them. So get in your happy baby. We are all happy babies. Let that stuck chi off the back of your legs fly away. Breathe in. Massage that back by moving your legs back and forth. It's giving your organs a nice flow of blood, a nice massage they wouldn't get otherwise. So give your body a little massage here. Engage your happy baby. Let your jaw be loose. Find where it feels good. Find your stretches. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then we're going to come into the bridge pose and then to shoulder stand to plow and then to Shavasana. So place your feet flat on the mat and let your buttocks be close to your feet, right? And come down. Shoulders are nice and flat. Chin is tucked. Everything's in alignment. Feeling good for my bridge. Bring in those heels towards your buttocks. You can feel them with your hands. This is great. If this is all you can do, this is it. Flat back on the ground. Here you are starting your bridge. If you want more, you bring your feet together, your toes together, your ankles together, your thighs together, your knees together. 
engage the feet you push into the feet as you push into the feet you push the hips high as you do you tuck the chin as you do you can roll the shoulders in to give yourself a deeper tuck then push into the feet push in keep the knees together and let the hips go to the sky keep the buttocks loose open up the chest push the hands in inhale exhale breathe into the chest it can be a little tough on your knees so be gentle and then open up the shoulders roll down one vertebrae at a time drop that lower back to the ground bring your knees in bring your hands into your knees bring your knees into your chest and rock and roll ah and then you can open up your hips here and rock and roll if you need to whatever works all right then bring your feet back down you can shake out your legs here if it's too much on your hips shake those legs out we're going to get ready for um shoulder plant shoulder stand to plow to wheel to our shavasana so get ready for shavasana and we're going to get ready to go to our shoulder stand so in the shoulder stand best way to get into it is to get these hips up over my shoulders <coughs> And how do I do that? The best way to do it is to use your body weight to get it up there. So push, push your hips up, bring your knees together, tuck the chin, bring the elbows down, bring the hands to the back, set yourself, keep your neck straight, keep your neck tucked, Keep your chin tucked, eye gaze to your belly. Set yourself and then extend your legs to your shoulder stand. Plow pose is where you take your legs Place them over your head and let them come down to the ground above your head. Your toes will come down. It's an intense stretch of your spine. You can let your hands come down. Breathe wherever you're at. Inhale, exhale. Bring your knees in, bring your hands to the back, and gently roll down one vertebrae at a time. <clears throat> Good. Whew. I'm going to finish with a wheel, and then Shabbat. All right, let's get ready for the wheel. I'm going to do this one because I never know what way to do it. All right, so plant your feet nice and steady. Your heels are in by your buttocks, right? Good. Roll down. Set yourself for the wheel by having it straight in alignment. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Bring your palms in alignment with your shoulders. Palms down, ear, uh, elbows back. And palms flat into the mat. And feet flat, eye gaze to the sky. Inhale, exhale. In your next inhale, you're going to push into your feet and your hands. And come on to your crown of your head and then push back up all the way into wheel.
in and gently come down and tuck your head bring your knees in rock and roll All right, let's get ready for Shavasana. It's gonna be yummy. So, I recommend you elevate your legs in Shavasana. So I'm gonna show you how I like doing it. It's kind of like the super corpse pose, right? This is super corpse. Super corpse. And I'm even gonna wear this over my eyes so I don't see anything. And this is just a little furry thing that you can wear as a neck thing but I'm gonna wear it on my head because I wanna drop out. So here's what the deal is. The most important part of yoga is Shavasana. And that is where all your ancestors, all your guides, they can talk to you here in this space of prayer and meditation because we have made it a sanctified space and we've asked for the highest good of all concern to happen here. And you have done the work of opening your body. Even if you just follow it in your mind, the universe knows your intention of your heart. So even if you just join meditation now and participate, that's fine. And if for some reason I lose any of my audiences, please don't stop not meditating right now. Breathe in through your nose, out through your belly. Let yourself sit deeply. Let your jaw be loose. Let your mind be loose. Don't think about things. If they come in, let them float away on a little boat. Make a cute little boat. Put it in a little lake. Put yourself in a beautiful, beautiful place. I recommend like a nice lily pond where you're like a fairy princess or an elf or whatever you want to be in this magical land. And as you drift in this beautiful space, you just feel your heartbeat and the water and the sun on you. And that is the meditation you can use for today. So find a pillow, elevate your legs, put a, a pillow underneath your head, and I'm gonna demonstrate, and um, a blanket because you really want to, I think this is gonna be enough of a blanket for me, it's just a sheet, but I think for today, because it's so warm in here, this will work. So I'm going to elevate my legs, so nice. So this pillow works really good. And so you want to just have a nice relax. Got your feet here. I can then take my my butterfly, beautiful butterfly sheet that I've had for a while now. It's so fun. And cover myself with my butterfly sheet. And then use this to cover my eyes. Right? So that I don't see anything, right? Just cover it. It's nice and soft and furry. All right, so hopefully everybody's in a safe space where they can drop in and they're not disturbed. So go ahead and find something to put over your eyes. Maybe uh, find a stone or something that feels good. I'm going to take my stone and put it on my heart chakra. Right? Put that right there. And then one hand on your heart and one on your belly. So that you can feel that energy you've created and gently lay yourself down as if you're a little baby putting yourself to sleep give yourself everything you need your pillow no visual light having a nice blanket to just gently know that you're covered that you're the blanket is more of a symbolic covering I mean, I'm not really hot, I'm not really cold, but it just feels like I'm being hugged, you know? And that's what I want for you. I want you to drop in and feel your ancestors giving you a big hug, trying to connect with you. So we're going to drop in for about five minutes, in through the nose, out through the mouth, focus on your breath. And then just come to a gentle breath 
in which you can float away and gently float on ethers of bliss you've created in your body. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, letting it all go. Give a little wiggle to your fingers and toes. And then rest back into a little moment. right hand up, cradle it underneath your head, and bring your knees up, and then gently roll over to your right side into a nice fetal position, right? Oh, and just let it all go again, just in that fetal position. Just try to like, oh, can I just stay here for like the rest of the day in a hammock in the sun? Maybe you can. So just take a moment to be in that bliss. And then gently bring your left hand in front of your heart center. And gently come up to a nice seated position and bring yourself to a nice seated position. Let's go ahead and uh, sit up nice and tall. Let your six bones be grounded. Good. Open up your palms to receive. 
open them up wide and receive at the highest level. Bring all that energy you've created up into your palms. Bring it up in between your palms. Feel that energy. I can feel it. Feel that energy you created. Bring it in right over your crown. So align yourself straight up and down. Inhale, exhale, let your belly be loose. And bring all the goodness the universe has for you. Bring it into your mind. Into the crown of your head, into your mind, into what you see, into what you smell, into what you say, into what you taste, what's in your heart, in your soul. Namaste. Thank you, my friends, for joining me today. What a lovely Sunday. It's very moist and nice out, so I hope everybody's going to be able to grow a nice garden or some pots on their deck or do something beautiful. Um, if anybody needs any morning glory seeds, you know where to come because I've got the morning glory seeds. All right, peace, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.